Hey Coda, so when we go to log in, something interesting happens here. If I click on Google, nothing happens. If I click on GitHub here, nothing happens. Right now, all of our signing in is happening here via our email address. So let me just show you how to go and set up this provider over here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over down to my routes, my login, but my actual login page, not the staging page, but the login page. And down here it says handle email login as follows, right? That's great, but that's not what I want. What I want to do is go over to the Superbase documentation and I'm gonna copy this code and paste it here. You can type this out, it won't take long at all. It's just very, very quick. And here you can see we want to go Superbase auth sign in with auth provider GitHub, right? So that's how to log in with your provider. Now remember, if I go back over to Superbase, so let me go and log into my Superbase account now, and I go down to authentication and providers, remember we set up GitHub in a prior video, right? We set up GitHub. Now, if you don't know where to get all of this, go to your GitHub account. So I'm gonna go here to GitHub, and then just log into your GitHub and go to your settings tab. So I'm gonna go down to settings and you want to go to developer settings. And then in OAuth apps, you will have whatever apps you've created. And if you haven't created one, just create your new OAuth app. And what you want to do when you do that is just make sure this redirect URL from Superbase, you copy this and you put it in the redirect where it asks you for it in the app. And then your client ID and your secret, you copy from GitHub and you paste here into Superbase. So this gets copied from here, from Superbase, pasted into GitHub. And then these two get copied from GitHub here into Superbase. Now, Google, I'm not gonna go through in this video because it requires sending them a video to sign up officially, etc. But with Google, you basically go through a very similar process. When you have the redirect URL, you give them the Superbase one, but your client ID and secret you get from Google and any other provider here. But right now, just to show you how it works so you can carry on with that, because I'm gonna do this later in the build, I'm just gonna get GitHub sort of up and running. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got that data there. I've got my login over here is I want to go and finish up coding this. So here I've got handle email login. What I want to do here is create a function. We're gonna call it handle GitHub login as follows. Now here what I'm gonna do is say const handle GitHub login is gonna be equal to dollar sign like such. And I need this to be an async function because what I'm gonna do is cut this code here and paste it in as follows. And then here what I wanna do is console log data. And here I'm going to console.log error as follows. So here I'll just, if it is an error, I'll just make sure we're aware it's an error and we'll do it like such. So here's my console log of error. And actually let's put a comma there like such and here's data. So where do I access this here? So here where I've got handle GitHub login, I'm just gonna scroll down and where is it now? So here's login, right? We've got this, we have here where it says uh, href to sign up. I don't want that. I wanna scroll down here. So let's change this a tag to be a button and we don't need this href anymore. So what we're going to do here is say on click and that's a dollar sign as well, is going to be equal to, or in fact, let me just see here on click. Yeah, that's right, as follows, handle GitHub login, as follows, brilliant. Right, so that should do something. Let's go back over here. Now I've got my console open as well, and let me just refresh the page and everything, and let's click on this little GitHub icon over here. So when I do that, there you go, you can see it's passed me over, right over here it's passed me to authorize code raiders, etc. Now this is for logging in and I haven't actually signed up yet. So what I could do is have a check to say, you know, make sure that this user is actually a member, etc. But I'm just gonna go ahead and authorize from here anyway. And there we are, I'm redirected back here to my application. Now you'll notice here that it's redirected me here to the home page. It's not where I want it to be. I also want a redirect to the actual staging 
page as follows. So here what I want to do in my GitHub code is I want to put in options. And here I want to say email, or let's put in redirect to. And this here is going to be pretty much as we did below with the email. So local href plus staging. So here I'm going to do the same thing. Like such, right? Brilliant. Let's go and try that again now. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to go to login and click on GitHub. That's passing me over redirecting to dashboard. Let me click on that. And there we are. I'm now logged in, right? Let's go and actually update that as well on our staging tab. So on staging, I want this to actually redirect now. I don't need that uncommented anymore. And that's great. But let me also just refresh the page, which it looks like it's already done when I made that change. Let's click on GitHub again. There you are. It's redirecting me. Right, great. Let's go back to the home page. There we are. If I click log out, there we go. So it's as simple as that. Now, you might say, okay, but that's for logging in. And why, why did we do that first? And you'd be completely correct to say, why did you go and do that first? Well, if you look here at the documentation with Superbase, so if we go back here, we can see this is sign in a user with OAuth. Create a new user I don't have with OAuth. So it's actually the exact same identical code. So what I'm going to do here is just copy this handle GitHub login. And when I go to sign up here, I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. I'm going to put in get handle GitHub login, but here I'm going to say sign up. And I want to do the same thing as login over here. So I'm going to go and now I also want this location to work. So let's go and steal that here from our login tab as we had it there and paste that in here. And we also want here use location. So this is all just copying basically everything to work the same. In fact, that use location doesn't come from quick there, it comes from quick city. So let's put that in as follows. Great. And so that's going to essentially do the same thing. But we do also need to go up here to where it says login with GitHub is again, change this to say a button and get rid of this href and just say on click and handle GitHub sign up, right? So it's the same, it's the exact same code on sign up. So what you might want to do here, I'm not going to bother right now because this is literally just for sort of education, etc. is you could put in some logic again to check whether that email already exists to log in via GitHub and then make them go through the sign up page. Why? Why is that important? Because what you want to do on your sign up page here where I've got sign up is I want to check that the is terms are valid, right? So those same checks we did here with email sign up, I could also do here with the GitHub sign up or the Google sign up, etc. So you could create a separate function and then, you know, use that function within each different type of sign up. Let me explain that in terms of the browser, just in case it didn't make sense. When we sign up, we want our user to agree to the terms. But if they go over to the login without signing up, so they go login, then they haven't agreed to the terms. They haven't ticked that. So you want to make sure that here you could put something to say if they click on, say, GitHub and that email for that provider doesn't exist, then what it's doing is it's basically then, you know, rejecting that there. If that's not already created, you could do that. Otherwise, you could say, you know, if you're going via OAuth, you you are automatically accepting to our terms and conditions. That would save you having to code all that, but it's up to you on how you really want to do it. But there you go. You can see it working. I am in HTTP, not HTTPS, so it worked in HTTP. Now, what I do want to say to you here, though, is when you do this with Google and others, it might not work unless you're doing it with HTTPS, i.e. you're using an SSL, etc. In which case, my recommendation is if your site's not live, just test that in live, right? Test it when you launch it on AWS or whatever. Otherwise, they do have like a testing functionality where you can say this is in test, so allow it and allow this Google account to be the tester and it will let you do that, etc. But what I want to focus on here is the actual coding up in JavaScript with Superbase. The only difference if you're doing, for example, Google is if you go to the Superbase documentation, instead of using GitHub as the provider here, you would use Google. So I hope that's really clear and useful for you because now what we can do is we can say, great, 
you know, here we have some OAuth working, i.e. people can sign up via GitHub now as well as email. And that's also going to help us in development and testing because we're going to be logging in and out all the time. I don't want to have to keep going to my email all the time. So now I, I can actually just go and use GitHub, which is super cool and it's going to save us a lot of time. So what do we want to do in the next session? Well, if we go here to my login and I go, well, let's just log in for the sake of logging in now, redirecting to dashboard here, I'm on dashboard. It should allow me to go to the dashboard. But what happens if I log out and now I try to access the dashboard down here? Well, it still lets me because I've not protected this route. And so we need to protect that route. So this is the next area that we want to solve for. We want to be able to protect the route so that if the user's not logged in, it redirects them. Now, the client side, that's very easy. We could do that right now, but I'm not going to because I know if I do that right now, then people might forget, ah, oh, we need the server side set up as well because people can fake whether they're logged in or not if they know what they're doing. If they're a programmer like you and me, they know what they're doing. They can fake whether they're logged in if they know what that trigger is on the client side. So what we want to do is go and set up now our server application to accept API calls. And that is what's going to allow us to go and check whether or not that user is logged in. Now, before we can create our server, what we need to do over here is create our API gateway, because now we want these two things to talk to each other. And I want to be able to do it from going through one do domain. I don't want to have to set up different domains, etc., and then cause and all of that. It's going to be a huge headache. Let's just do this right. Let's go and get Nginx set up. And to do that, we're going to need Docker as well. So we'll get Docker sorted out. We're going to get Nginx set up so that we can then talk to Quick and make sure that's working. Once we got that working, we're going to set up here our Express server. And that way, our app can just make easy calls to like, you know, the same domain slash API, and it'll go and make requests directly to this. That way, we can then go back and finish protecting our routes on the server side. And whilst we go through this together, we need to remember that we got to shut up and code.